Does she have questions for you? Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the 48th annual Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. This year is the first year for our children's author chats and readings. We've decided to make this year, 2021, the year of the dog. I know many of you listening in have one dog or two or more, even if it's a stuffed one you love. This weekend, you can learn about more wonderful dog books and even hear some of them read. You can also purchase the ones you love the most. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm Sky Anderson, and I will be introducing these chats and readings with our authors. I'd like you to meet our guest author, David Leswick, and his wonderful canine conversation book, Dogversations, Conversations with My Dog. David is a photographer and now a writer from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. That's in Canada. His family includes one lovely wife, Karen, and two lively children, Julia and Daniel as well as three dog stars, Eva, the Brittany Spaniel, Bruno, the Golden Retriever, and Agnes, the genetically diverse rescue dog. David has been putting together weekly dog photography projects on social media for more than eight years now. His writing and dog conversations grew organically from those as a way to tell the stories behind the photos. Over the past years, these dogversations have grown to reveal the personalities of each of the pups and to tell the rest of the story. Although Dogversations is his first published book, Dave is constantly working on new photos and dogversations. Follow him on Instagram to see some of his new work. If these dogs could talk, this is precisely what Eva, Bruno, and Agnes would say. And as a dog photographer, David flawlessly captures the fun, quirky, clever, curious, and witty personalities of his family's three canine companions and this collection of heartwarming photography with the hilarious dogalogue that comes along with it. The perfect dog treat for the eyes, ears, heart, and sense of humor of any animal lover Dogversations is a laugh out loud historical hysterical glimpse at how this canine crew tries to make heads or tails out of the daily lives with their family that loves them. Dogversations was the book of the year for 2020 on the dog review blog Doggy Vals. It's rare that the book of the year is picked in the summer, but book reviewers know a bestseller when they see one. I keep my copy by my bedside and read part of it each night. One of these nights, I'm going to make it all the way through in one fell swoop, but I'll have to go to bed early to do that. Hello, David. I am so thrilled to finally meet you. Nice to meet you too, Sky. Great. First of all, tell us about all the dogs in your life, and then we'll talk more about dogversations. Oh, oh sorry. They're the same dogs, aren't they? They're all working dogs, right? Though uh, I'm personally not sure what jobs they do, except for entertaining and modeling. By the way, which of these three dogs has is the highest paid? And when are you getting another puppy? Oh, okay. Let's start again. Tell us about the dogs you had growing up. So one of the first memories I have is actually when we got our first dog, a Sheltie uh way back in the day and I was probably about four or five and I, that's one of the first things that I remember is is getting Murdoch the Sheltie and unfortunately we lost Murdoch um but when we were looking for him at the Humane Society there was another Sheltie that needed a home and we ended up adopting her she was apparently she had convinced everyone there that she was too special to stay with the other dogs so she got to stay with the front manager and go home with people every night and she was an absolute princess and then later uh we ended up getting a golden retriever that we wanted a big manly dog and it turned out to be a big baby as well uh and she was amazing she was with us for 16 years um as a golden retriever and she saw me all the way through grade eight until after i got married 
Um, and we started, and my wife and I had started having dogs of our own. And then we had a couple golden retrievers. We had Kale, a golden retriever, who was a red one. Uh, we had a yellow golden retriever, uh, a golden one, uh, Oliver, who was an absolutely lovely dog too. And after Kale, after Oliver passed away, we got Eva, a Brittany Spaniel, to try and uh, try something different. And in, I guess in the States, you guys just call them Britneys, but up here they're Britney Spaniels. And she's a, she's bred as a hunting dog. We've never hunted with her though, but she loves herself some birds and will watch them all the time and squirrels and is very alert and overly smart. So she keeps us on our toes. And then um, after that, we got Bruno a couple years later into that. And he's a delightful clown of a golden retriever. Um, also, uh, also a hunting dog, um, although I don't think that he would be very good at it because he really just wants to hang out with his people and not leave them. Uh -huh. And about two years after we had Bruno, I guess, we picked up Aggie from a rescue site because they had an influx of 70 puppies come in at once that they needed homes for. Um, so we adopted her and brought her into our life and, um, it's been pretty chaotic since. So who coined the term dogversation and just what is a dogversation anyway? So a dogversation is a, an imagined conversation either between a human and a dog or between the dogs themselves that are then written down uh, to go with photographs. And it actually, I think it's something that grew through uh, social media on Flickr. I've been part of dog photography groups since 2012 doing weekly projects. And when the conversations became more frequently, someone, I don't, I don't even remember who, uh, made a comment and just said really nice dog conversation and it just stuck. And it's uh, a nice, I think it's fitting and it's um, entertaining too. Great. And uh, now, are you ready to read a dog conversation for us? Sure. I'm just going to ask my son Daniel to come and help because he was wanting to participate as well. Great. Want to say, have a seat, bud? Okay. So Hi, Daniel. Hi. Okay. So, Dan, you're going to read Bruno? Sure. Okay. So Dan is channeling his inner Bruno here, which I think it's mm, is it pretty much lying around in bed all day. I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, no, no, we're doing more than lying around here. So we're gonna read the jailbreak one, okay? So I'm gonna be me, you be Bruno. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Where are you going, Bruno? Jailbreak, no time. Jailbreak, no walls can find. You're gonna be an escape artist? Sometimes it's the only option. Being locked in this cage is completely intolerable. It's like a horror show in here. I thought it was an open exercise pen with a carpeted floor, a soft towel, and a good view of the lake. Truly substantial situation, Dave. I think you may be setting your standards a little high. You're a new puppy who's yet to learn how to pee outside and likes to chew electrical cords. Kennel training is apparently a good thing to help you learn the house rules. Can't talk, busy escaping. And what is the plan when you do escape? Can't talk, plan, can't plan, busy escaping. And how does this fit in with the house rule of waiting patiently to be let out of your exercise pen? Rules, mules. I review the rules more like a loose guideline. Sounds like um, we're done here. So if you'll stop your chit chat, excuse me, I have some escaping to do. Good job, Dan. Great, thank you, Daniel. That was adorable. And I love that photo and puppy. By the way, what's the story behind the cover photo? The cover photo was, oh, Bruno was barely a year there, or maybe, maybe even just a year old. So Eva was a couple years his senior. And I was wanting to get a photo of her with a toy for eat with a Easter bunny toy. Uh, for an Easter themed shot for her weekly photo project. And I had them on the deck and Bruno decided he would rather have the toy and Eva said, no, thank you. <laughs> and Eva is, she's close to his size there, but now he's twice her size and she always has stood up to him. And I just loved how she was pulling the toy and pushing him down with the other paw. It just, it's so much her 
um, in how that how she interacts with him. She's the boss, even though she's the tiny one. Uh, she's smaller, but she's older. Yes. Okay. Your book follows all three of your dogs from puppyhood onward. Why is it that people like puppies so much? And why do you think puppies like kids so much? I think, I think it's because they're just absolutely adorable. Um, it's hard to walk past a puppy in the park without smiling or wanting to, wanting to say hi to it. And I, I think kids and puppies just get each other. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they just truly see each other and are willing to actually get down and play. So the puppies and the kids will just have a good time together. I agree. Do your dogs each have their favorite human? And if so, how does that work? Because there are four humans in your family and only three dogs. Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, Eva, Eva has picked me as her all time favorite. Um, we did umbilical training with her as a puppy where I would wear a lead around my waist and then have it hooked up to her so she would follow me because she had a habit of chewing on everything. So we figured the easiest way to keep under control was close. And apparently it really, really, really stuck. And so if I'm home, she is sitting there watching me usually um, or waiting outside the bathroom even. It's, it's <laughs> a lot. Um, Bruno, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Bruno has a favorite. I think Bruno thinks he is everyone's favorite because that's his personality. Um, but he, he is happy with whomever, whomever is around. He's just happy no matter what environment he has. And Agnes, I think she, I think she really attached to my wife. Um, she was home more when we picked her up and she was the one that got Agnes a little bit out of her shell. Um, although I'm working from home now and I think Agnes is now very attached to my office. Um, so she often just hangs in, it hangs out in there because it's a quiet environment. So it sounds like uh, your dogs may have imprinted on one human, even though that's a bird word, not a dog word. <laughs> yeah, well, Eva is a bird dog, so I guess it fits. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Here is your first multiple choice question. A, what do you love most about your dogs? B, what makes them happy? C, do they help or hinder your writing and how? D, what was your favorite book as a child? And E, how many unpublished and half finished books do you have in your imagination currently? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> you Maybe know, uh, done. well, I'll, I'll probably pick two if that's okay, um, because they're, they're kind of fit together. So I've been doing these weekly photo projects. One dog gets a weekly project, so 52 shots a year, and the other dogs get monthly projects um, during any calendar year. So they like, get one to two dedicated photo sessions with them. And probably in that, I would think I have at least another 200 um, dog versations ready to go. And each book is 60 dog versations. So I probably have three books in the potentially in the bank. Um, but my, my commitment is to, to deal with this one first and, uh, and, and maybe move forward from there. But I do have that much material just sort of sitting there on, uh, on, on Flickr and partly on Instagram as well. Great. And, but in terms of um, if they're helpers or hinderers, they're definitely helpers because they're idea machines. And I just keep my sort of watch what's going on around me and always have an eye open to what would make a good photograph. And sometimes you'll get a photograph where you say, you know, this conversation would go really well with it. Or at the dinner table, we'll be talking and I'll get a, hey, do you think Bruno would wear a Captain America shirt conversation note and stuff? It's like, yeah, I think we can do that. So the dogs then feed into it and are just yeah, uh, generators like that. So it's maybe a family project too. Very much so. And I have very good helpers, Julia, Daniel, and Karen. They're all excellent dog wranglers. And um, we've been looked at in the park very funny before um, for what we're doing. <laughs> okay. But er everyone goes along with it. Good. Golden retrievers like Bruno seem to be everywhere in ads, commercials, on book covers, just everywhere I look. 
and yet they're not the number one dog in America, according to the AKC. Labrador retrievers are. Are Goldens more photogenic than other breeds, do you think? And are Brittany's more common in Canada where you live than they are down here? Well, Brittany's are, are really quite rare here. Um, we happen to get one from the, I think she's the only breeder for Saskatchewan and Alberta for the two provinces. Oh. And she's relatively close to us. And I had a friend at work whose parents actually had five Britneys. Um, so we ended up getting, uh, getting hooked up with her from there. And we have only went on walks, probably seen one other Brittany that was not Eva um the whole time we've had her so she rarely sees any dogs that look like her um but but she's lovely and goldens goldens are pretty pretty darn photogenic they're easier to photograph than a black than a black lab simply because there's a lot more detail in the fur you can catch on camera um the only problem with uh photographing bruno is sometimes he's so distracted it's hard to get him looking and doing what he's supposed to do because he has his own mind Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you might get us more familiar with dog conversations by reading another one and tell us why you picked that one or who picked it. Sure. Well, this one is from, sorry, I'm just having trouble one second here. So this one here is eating the puppy and, and I picked it because it is just, well, A, it's cute um that's the the best one and the other thing is it was really an interesting time because when we got agnes the one that she bonded with was bruno um if it wasn't for him i don't know how well she would have fit into our family and i think this is also just a, a really good way of showing how puppies can play with adult dogs and adult dogs know know the boundaries and he's mm -hmm. you know, it looks like he's just chomping down on her they were they were just playing and I happened to be in the right spot with the camera and everything lined up lined up really well for it. As a dog trainer, I generally say that um, adult dogs let puppies do whatever they want. Um, but at about four or five months, they lose their puppy license. How old were the two dogs in this one? And they look like they're exactly the same color. You know, they they do. And that's part of what I like about it is it's hard to tell where one ends and the other begins in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, the Bruno was probably two to three years old here. Um, Aggie, I think we never knew exactly how old she was when we got her because right. of the puppy. And um, we were actually told she was part Corgi uh, from the from the rescue. So because the mom that they found her with was much smaller than Aggie ended up being. Um, so we think she might have been three or four months at the time of this photo, but we have no way to know for sure. Okay. Those are very much puppy teeth in there though. Yeah. yeah. So are you ready for your second conversation? Uh, yeah, just give me one second, Daniel. Okay. I gotta get my co-reader back here. Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna do it from the pages time, okay? Okay. So, all right, so I'm gonna be Bruno, or no, I'm gonna be me. I play me, you, I play, like Bruno. Bruno. you play Bruno, okay? It's an easy life. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bruno, what are you doing with Agnes? I'm eating her. I don't think that's allowed. Dad, you said his name and he got happy. Yeah. <laughs> Would it sound better if I said that I was playing with her? Only if you have a likely story to go with it. Oh, but I do. You see, sometimes I think she's a toy. Really? Sure do. You said you got her for me to play with? That is partly true. We also thought that we could give her a good life and that she would be a fun addition to the family. The second part of your statement, um, notwithstanding, if you brought her home for me to play with, she must be a toy. If I squeeze her in just the right places, sometimes she makes a noise like a squeaky toy. But you do realize you're not allowed to eat the puppy, don't you? Well, I do now. Are you from on that? Quite. Okay, I'm going to go play with my squeaky toy then. Well, Thanks. thank you, Daniel. Good job. That was a funny one. All right. And, and so, when I did say his name, he did wag his tail on the floor here because he's always listening. Oh, my gosh. That was great. So my next question is another multiple choice. 
A, so what came first, the photo or the conversation? B, did you take photos as a kid? C, do you consider yourself a writer first or a photographer first? D, which do you like better, dogs or photos? E, do you want me to repeat any of those questions? Over to you. You still with us, Dave? Okay, we'll just uh, pipe in and I'll continue. I was wondering if there are any other dog books in your future or maybe sheep books. Years ago, I created a calendar for my mother and put a photo on each page that was related to that month, like a Christmas tree for December and so on. If kids listening to this chat would like to make a calendar, or even want to start writing and editing their own book, what type of advice would you give them as far as writing or photographing? Honestly, just to do it. Um, sometimes you just got to get out there and take the first step, take the first picture and see what inspires you. If you're going to put together a collection, just get out there, start taking the photos, start putting them together and hopefully have a, a nice theme that runs through. If you're doing a calendar, it's great if you have winter in January and summer in July. But other than that, just whatever whatever speaks to you. Good, so just, just get out there and take pictures and practice and take more pictures and take more pictures. And, and whatever you're doing, if you're doing it for yourself and you truly enjoy it, it it's gonna be worthwhile and wonderful. Good, good, good advice. So for our viewers who want their own copy of Dogversations, where can they go to purchase a copy? Um, so I do have some, uh, I, I am able to do sales through the website there, the dogversationsbook.com website. Um, the ones that I'm selling on the website are larger uh, versions. It's just like what Sky has um, and it's a hardcover version and I'm signing them as well. There are smaller uh, versions that are not as shiny uh, available through Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and any other online book so seller like that um, that are available for purchase as well. Um, but I but I do do the the sales on what I'm calling the the premium edition as well. Great. It's all, it's all the same comment, just like uh, content, just slightly different formatting. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today, Dave Leswick. It's been fun and something I've wanted to do for many months. Do you have any final words for us? No, just uh, thank you for having me. This is actually really, really exciting. And I'm glad to, to share a little bit more about the book and uh, about dogs. Great. OK, kids, we have other authors to chat with. So now is a great time to pick another one to listen to. Bye for now. Okay, well, thank you. Did that go okay? Yeah, we're still recording. And Patty is still muted. So did did your um, screen